My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I'm Eric here, Gala Jonathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. Welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as Rune, where I believe we are about to end turn to see what Gimli is going to do, and indeed how Darwinian will deal with Lok Khan Rukar the Mighty as he makes his way through Sant and We. Our army in Burra Monarchus is still training. We have got that's going to drop away then that will go to two then those two will train together and then you two will train and be the garrison no i'll tell you what and then train you to be the garrison so the army and burrow monarchists will follow soon behind captain gizik is moving north captain yaban is returning to temujin's glory the only place where he'll be retrained as i feel we might need a strong garrison in strondost and so Zartoshi has returned there. But as I say, we are at an end turn. And thus, I end the turn. Now, I am incensed. And I'm literally incensed from a few moments ago. Now, I'm possibly a breach of some sort of rule. Not related to my work. This is all about Total War Center. Uh, but I'm a moderator on Total War Center, specifically for the Divide and Conquer Forum. I, therefore, am... If anyone reports any posts, I get a little email that tells me with the reason why they've reported it, thus ensuring anonymity. And to ensure and protect that anonymity, I shall name no names. However, I've just been told that a post has been reported purely because the person used an emoji in place of the word, pardon my French, fucked. I have never been so incensed about a free speech thing that I am right now. I just cannot believe that someone would find this offensive. I am literally flabbergasted. Now, you will struggle to find someone who opposes swear words more than me. In everyday language, they have no purpose. They are literally useless. They add nothing to a conversation. The only places where I suggest that swear words have merit is when they're used for humorous effect. And in that regard, I think they are second to none for conveying a message of humour. They are so over the top and unnecessary that it adds to the joke. Screwed doesn't cut it. We're buggered doesn't cut it. And some people will probably find that a swear word as well. But you, the swear word just adds oomph. It adds an extra something. It's difficult to explain, but it adds it and it works with humour. And of course, in the, if you don't swear very often, like such as myself, then when you do swear, it actually has meaning. But if the F word is every second word to you, then if you use it in anger or you use it in frustration or you use it to convey emotion, it no longer does because you use it too much. It's the boy who cried wolf. But in this regard, it was literally used as a joke and the guy reported it and I am absolutely incensed. <laughs> now, unfortunately, because I'm only a moderator of the Divide and Conquer forum and not the Third Age Total War forum, I can't actually access the discussion thread that Total War Center creates for the moderators to then discuss this very thing. So I can't even go to the other moderators and be and say, I'm strongly against censoring this post. I heavily recommend we do not censor it. Um, so I've messaged one of my fellow moderators in the hope that that message will get through. Uh, but my God, it absolutely outrages me. I can't believe, he also used the word playfully. So the user has playfully replaced, used an emoji in place of a swear word. It's like, what? Why does that offend you? I literally typed in my message to my fellow moderator, this person, if they find an emoji in place of a swear word offensive, I would submit they should not be using the internet. Or possibly, and perhaps more pertinently, they could step out of 1940 because the world has moved on. And I literally, I'm so opposed to this. I cannot describe it enough. But I should play the game I'm currently playing and not just move around the map and pretend I'm doing things to keep you <laughs> give you all something to look at. Okay. Oh, but there we are. And I... Uh, no, I won't talk about it more. Uh, right, uh, Margot. I will talk about it more. Margot, chase Gimli down. And then end the term. Because I am so opposed to swear words. I absolutely hate them. I feel like I'm coming from this from a point of view of a modern and, 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 and cleanly spoken person who is not offended, sorry, I'm rustling a crisp packet, that comes up on the microphone, I'm, who's not offended by these things. But how someone can be, I mean, is he an Amish and he's literally just discovered the internet? I, I just, I can't, I, I just cannot fathom why this would offend him. Now, the reason that you have to use emojis is mostly because Total War Center will actually not let you swear. I'm fairly certain that if you put in an actual swear word, it will replace it with an emoji. And failing that, if there are swear words on Total War Center, they get 
detected by Google's weird anti like um anti like social whatever search thing that it does and gives like total War center has been taken down before because too many people was i think it was swearing or something stupid like that and google like phased us out of their search results because we we violated their terms of like clean user or something stupid i don't know um so the, an action in this regard is mostly that either pe everyone either uses emojis instead or the the site automatically changes to emojis. I have no idea where Gimli's just gone. This just leaves me concerned. Um, like, for example, on a lot of internet sites, I pe see people use the word kitten instead of the F word. And it really throws me off when I'm reading from a sentence because it's a very new thing for me. I'm going to build that there when we can get that. Um, I'm not really... I, I don't really use this kitten replacement word. So it's very unknown to me so as i say it always throws me off when i read it but I, I see people using that a fair bit oh we're doing all right and they didn't chase us we're getting that and i'll take a blacksmith after that so there you go something i'm really annoyed about well, i'm not annoyed but i'm just i can't believe it i just cannot believe it oh I was uh, a moderator on, on the Total War Center forum, actually, and perhaps now some of you will see me in a different light, but um, I was actually stripped of my moderation powers. Uh, I was found to be wanting as a moderator, and apparently I condoned illegal activity, which I didn't. Uh, but the the reactionists of Total War Center just could not stand my forward-thinking approach. Uh, and I was removed as a moderator for promoting illegal activities and for um, like using a user's identity without their knowledge or something stupid like that. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, let's look at this. Dudanis. He has got a couple of units of crossbowmen, three in all. Some of those nice Darwinian men-at-arms. Some trash. An Erkenwin, who I believe is in the city itself. Yes, he is. He's got some mounted thorn crossbows, but otherwise, our archer storm should win the day for us. Have I saved it? Let's save it again. We shall all find a way to an and I'll tell you what it was day. about. Um, we, one of our creators, Zarathos, our unit creators, he could not stand how ridiculously strict Louis Lux, I think it's Louis Lux, whoever created the Imladris unit, he couldn't stand how strict that guy was with permissions. Um, and to highlight the futility of the rules, um, what he was suggesting was to basically have an image of the guy's unit on one side and then basically recreate it almost like for like, but by so therefore creating his own unit, but using that unit as inspiration. And he suggested this was a way to get around the fact that this guy wouldn't let anyone edit his work. Um, which I can understand is a bit cheeky, but it doesn't violate any rules. And I then said, that sounds a bit suspect but if you can be squeaky clean about it then i in my position as a moderator will support you as much as i can but it has to be squeaky clean i.e it cannot go against the rules however that what i said those words i've just said to you got me removed as a moderator and i have been labeled as promoting illegal activities and in, I think it was impersonating yeah impersonating a moderator because even though I was a moderator there was a whole stupid debate about it when I was banned because someone took fault with the fact that I called myself a moderator but Total War Center calls you moderators that's the name for the moderators however apparently I was impersonating a site moderator I was stepping beyond my power and suggesting that I, a local moderator, and just because I didn't use the bloody word local, I was apparently impersonating. It's the kind of thing where now that I actually work in the legal field, I literally look back and scoff at how, at what these people saw as a, as a violation of their rules because it's a joke. But the outcome of it is, and I've probably been shouting this whole time and I apologise for that, but the outcome of course is that um, I lost all of my moderation powers and now on my profile, if anyone who is of any power on the site comes and looks at my profile, there are two little messages that tell them that I was once, uh, three messages sorry, that tell them that I was once a moderator and that I was struck off because I was impersonating a site moderator and I was promoting illegal activity. Now, you've all heard my story. You can all now judge for yourself whether or not I was uh, banned wrongly 
falsely, which I submit I was. Because at no point did I ever say that we were going to take his work and we were going to use it. I merely said, if you have a legal way of getting around the requirements, then I, as a moderator, will support that. But that was deemed too risky, and I was struck off. Now, the thing that always made me laugh about it all was that the debate about whether or not I should lose my powers got very lengthy and quite people were quite heated. And it always made me laugh up until about now when I've got the Discord thread because I always saw it as an, like, <laughs> it was a, an internet forum. It's like I honestly don't care in the grand scheme of things whether or not I lose my moderator powers on an internet forum. It's not like it's going to affect my job prospects. Like the, the level of depth they went to. And so because of that, I was I was as helpful and as um, compliant as I could possibly be. And I literally said to the, the main guy who then eventually told me I'd lost all my powers. I was like, look, if it's easier if I just step away and step down, then, then do it. So spare me all of this ridiculous ongoing discussion when we already know what the outcome is going to be. Um, but Total War Center's always had a bit of a problem with a stick up its arse, if I'm honest. Um, there's... Some of the moderating that goes on there, I'm very against. There are little... Some of the moderators are so strict that they, it almost counters free discussion. And I just think you can people can be a bit too anal with it. And this is the thing with our Discord as well. Currently on the Discord, there's various channels and they each have a purpose. So in one of the channels we've set up to discuss any sort of modding at all and divide and conquer itself. And then there's another one which is set up to discuss like strategy games and then one for other genres of games. And in these, people are then to discuss. But there's also then a channel called The Mead Hall, which is simply just a have a laugh channel, talk about whatever you want. And s some of my moderators, I would suggest, but I've never, I don't feel they do it enough for me to message any of them. But some of the people who I've elected as marshals and swan knights, I feel can sometimes be a little too strict in their application of where should people talk. And I'm far more for open and flowing discussion than then someone coming and dropping a hammer and saying, you can't talk about that here, go over there. Now, I can understand that if they're having a l literal rigorous debate about like modding, for example, then yes, go to the modding place so that other people who want to read about modding can go there and read your conversation. They might not read about it if it's in the Mead Hall because they won't think to look for it in the Mead Hall. That is the point of the, the, the halls. It's not about ensuring that um, everyone is staying on topic and we're all performing exactly to the letter of the law. It's just so that for ease of access for future people who might want to read about the mod, they can go to the mod channel, there they'll read about the mod. But if it's just one or two comments in the mead hall, then like, just let it flow. And Total War Centers doesn't have that kind of approach. They're uber strict about who can say what, where and when. And they're incredibly strict about what you can say. And I've always been slightly against it. And to be honest, the fact that I'm a moderator now is only... They've begrudgingly given that to me purely because the Divide and Conquer forum, sub-forum, it's surely, by extension, the leader of that mod should be a moderator. If not, to be honest, the whole team. All of us should be moderators. Hummingbird, Elite Dwarf, RK, Racer, and our newest initiate, who's still a little in the probation zone, but Knight of the North, who's currently our newest modding initiate, doing some writing, a bit more full-time. And uh, but they should all be moderators, because it's our sub-forum. But it doesn't work like that, because we have to follow Total War Center's rules. So. Um, so there's a little bit of a bitch and a moan about Total War Center, actually. I'm sorry for that. And now the reason I'm saying I'm sorry for that is because for the roughly 4,000 people that will watch this video, I'd suggest there's going to be at least two comments I'm going to put my money on. Two comments that say, will this dude just shut up and play the game? Because uh, I already get people moaning enough that I talk about the mod. And another, someone summed it up the other day very nicely uh, by saying, why would the mod creator not talk about the mod in his own videos? What do these people expect? And that guy gets it. That guy gets it. But anyway, let's return to the mod, um, as I have a pertinent point about these gentlemen. Somebody also suggested, why are the Avari units in silver if when you side with the elves, all of your mainline units become gold? Excuse me, sorry, hiccup. That's a very good question. And the answer is quite simple. The elder Avari units are gold. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So the two elder Avari units do have gold armor. That is what they look like. Uh, it's only the Avari Naharim and the Avari Warriors, I think they're called, that are in silver. 
And mostly that is just to add some variation to the Avari roster, to be honest. No, there's no other hidden meaning to it. Uh, so that's the answer to that question. But it was quite... A, I thought it was a good, a good question. Additionally, with the Avari Warriors, um, in, indeed, we have... I feel somewhat begrudgingly Hummingbird has agreed that their swords were backwards in the last episode. And so not in any more of these videos because I don't mod the ongoing campaigns. But for the next version, their swords will be the other way around. Wow, oh, I put my comb down somewhere and I can't find it. Bugger. I can always lose it for anything. Uh, now, a channel-related topic, lore videos. Uh, enough, a lot of time has obviously passed since the last one because I'm getting the usual comments of, where are the lore videos? I only subscribe to you for the lore videos. Where are the lore videos? And whilst I do enjoy the lore videos, and they are by far and away my most popular videos, if you check out my popular videos playlist at the very bottom of the list on my channel, so when you're on my channel homepage at the bottom is most popular videos, the top 14 videos are either lore videos or installation videos. And there's only two installation videos in that. So, <laughs> of the top 14, 12 videos are lore videos, which I'm pretty sure is every single lore video. They are genuinely the most watched videos on my channel. Ergo, common sense would dictate I should focus more time on them. But, lore videos are the one thing about the channel I actively now kind of don't look forward to. I don't dislike them, but they require so much research on my part now that it turns this from a hobby to more of a job. And I've spoken about that many, many times. But the minute that this actively cuts into my free time quite substantially is the time that I would stop it. Now, I know some of you would look at me and be like, you're stupid. I mean, you you earn money from this. And quite a, I don't earn loads of money, but I earn... I, I don't earn anywhere near as much as I get paid from my almost minimum wage job. But I do earn money. And um, I'm not on minimum wage, actually. I'm slightly above it, but I don't earn very much in my job at the moment. There's potential, obviously. The legal field is reasonably lucrative, but it depends if I'm any good at it. And it was still a little too early to say. <laughs> but um, I don't earn very much from YouTube. But obviously I do earn some money. And one of the biggest contributing factors to that are the law videos. So there's a, there's a question of suggesting, well, if they make you the most money, why don't you focus on them, you idiot? But... If I focused on them, I would lose desire to do the rest and I would just stop. So it's kind of a... It's a bit of a play. If you've got to play it out. I found my comb. I know you were all very concerned. Uh, so... But anyway, the long and short of it is the lore videos will come whenever I feel enough energy to do the next lore video. And there's big breaks between them because they take so much time. Now I have to do the research. That... It's something I have to really factor in and think, do I want to lose almost my whole Saturday morning or afternoon or sometimes whole most of the day just for this lore video? So that's why they take a long time. But the lore videos I've decided are not going to be about Baron and Luthien because I don't find Baron and Luthien very interesting. I find them really boring. And I don't want to do the necessary research. In fact, I didn't even finish reading the Baron and Luthien book. I got about halfway through and I just couldn't drum up the desire to read it. So I'm afraid I went back to the Horus Heresy and I'm currently on the third book and I'm absolutely loving it. Totally guessed what's going to happen though. I mean, it's why, does, why have they not worked out what Horus is going to do? They know that there's something fishy going on. They know that there's something affecting the whole Legion and everyone feels this change in the air. So why on earth would they not get suspicious when Horus handpicks members from different um, squads to go down to the planet first? Like, does that scream of an ambush? Because it screams of an ambush to me. Although I suppose the Space Marines at this time, it's an incredibly alien concept that they would be fighting against other Space Marines. So maybe the one thing they would never expect is for their War Master and indeed their Legion Primarch to turn against them. But it's bloody obvious that he's going to, to an outside reader. But then, of course, an outsider has the benefit of knowing what happens. Even if you've never read the Horus Heresy, you are you know what's going to happen because it's set 10,000 years before the current Warhammer universe. And everyone, even if you're not really interested in 40k, must know that there are Chaos Space Marines. So you must kind of know that Space Marines fight against Space Marines later in the time. So it's got to start somewhere, and we all know Horus Heresy is the beginning of it, so you know it's coming. Which is why partially I wonder if perhaps 
there's something like 40 books in the Horus Heresy, and by the third one, Space Marines are already about to turn traitor. So I think that's... I think that is because everyone knows they do turn traitor, so the series is kind of like, well, we everyone knows what's going to happen, so let's just get that part over and done with early. So I'm really quite interested to see what the other 39 or 40 books are actually going to be about. <laughs> And it must just be the ongoing conflict. I mean, I know how it ends with the Battle of Terror, and I kind of already know how the, the whole, the grand scheme of the heresy ends. But um, I, it's interesting. I'm very interested to see how it does play out. And I do really like Garviel Loken. I'm very... I think I like him enough for him to maybe get me interested into the Grey Knights uh, and make assumptions and connections there, as you will. But I'm, I, I like him a lot. He's a, he's a compelling main character so far, so I'm enjoying them a lot. But anyway, so I didn't finish reading Baron and Luthien. <laughs> Sidetrack there, sorry. Ah, oh, Jesus, we've already spent 20 minutes. I haven't even done time six once, have I? Sorry, I've not really been paying attention. We might even lose this. I was hoping our archer storm would save the day, but maybe not. Their armoured, their experience, their nation is better than us. Only half the enemy force remains. We must pray they lose their will to fight. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead, the next lore video will be about the second battle of Beleriand. Because I feel like in the Fëanor video, I kind of covered the first battle. And um, I don't really want to do a video for that. But what I'm also going to do, finally, after all the time banging on about it, in an attempt to ensure that there's not such a big gap... <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Not such a big gap between videos... I'm going to do it about a single battle, and then the next one will be about a single battle, in the attempt for the video to be closer to, say, 15, 20 minutes, rather than 40. So that's what I'm thinking, and that's where we're heading. So you're going to get the Battles of Beleriand. Um, see, it's, uh, I believe there are five. This is what I mean. This is why I have to start doing research. I mean, I know pockets of the first age, bits and bobs, like the Nerneath Arnerdiad, and... Or Nerneath... Arnoidiad, Battle of Unnumbered Tears, and the like, just various bits and bobs, various people and their their outcomes on the histories. But as you all saw with this, the the latest travesty of mine of calling Ancalagon and Glauron, getting them mixed up. Even when I know the characters' names, I'm still prone to getting them mixed up here, there, and everywhere. So it requires research, and I'm not as interested in the First Age. I'm just not. And the reason is because the Numenorians are my favourite race. So I'm more interested in Numenor, i.e. the Second Age, than anything else. And failing that, the Dwarves are my favourite. After the Numenorians, the Dwarves are easily my favourite. And the Dwarves don't play much of a part in the First Age. They're very briefly mentioned. Uh, they would nowhere near as much info on them as there is on the Elven Kingdoms, for example. We know virtually nothing about Belagost and Nogrod, save for the fact that they fall into ruin at the um, sundering of Beleriand at the end of the age, in the War of Wrath. So, they come into the story way more into the Third Age, obviously with the quest for Erebor, you learn more about them with that. The, the War of the Dwarves and Orcs tells you more... Uh, Arguably, the War of the Dwarves and Orcs tells you more about the Dwarves than the whole of their his dealings with the First Age. No, you don't even get that many names of the dwarves in the first age. There really are a very unexplored peoples in the first age. I would submit. Maybe Tolkien explored them more in the letters. I've never read the letters. I'm a fan, yes, but I also have a job. And, I mean, I have other things I like doing. I can't devote my whole life to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Which is what I would submit you might need to do in order to retain the information. Like, yes, I mean, I've read the books many times, but I still can't tell you every fact off the top of my head. And I would submit that those that can either are blessed with very good memories or read it so much or almost study it at a degree-like level to ensure that they can keep up with all the knowledge. And I don't have the time for that. I'm a, I'm a, like, I've am ai studied a law course, which is obviously a famously easy and breezy university degree. Like, how many lawyers... All of us lawyers do basically no work at uni and just come out of it with degrees at the end. It's like... It is not what you would consider, that was sarcasm by the way, it is not what you would consider a DOS course, is what I used to call them. Now I'm not going to suggest what I would think is a DOS course, fear of offending anyone. Uh, but I would suggest that there are some courses at university that are easier than others. And I wouldn't put law in the bracket of absolute walk in the park. Now it depends I suppose where you go to university, what country you live in, but 
in England certainly, some courses are a bit easier than others, and the fact that some universities have them. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm guilty of that very fact. I took a whole module on Japanese culture and society, and it counted towards my law degree. So arguably, I am one of those people. <laughs> Uh, so there we are. And if I could, I also was uh, would have taken an Italian module, but um, that didn't count towards my degree, and I had to have taken Italian in the first year and second to take it in the third. Uh, anyway, I'm probably offending people now, so I <laughs> shouldn't talk. Oh, we did win! Yes. like sweet nectar. Come, let us drink of the most rare and glorious fruit. We have, in the winning spot, 212 kills. The Dragon Riders got the most kills. You are joking. How did they do that? They were last into the battle, and they had 43 men to start with. No, that's how many they lost. Hold on, which one were the Dragon Riders, then? They're the Dragon Riders, but they didn't have very many men. Oh, I'm really confused. Is this how many they have left afterwards? Casualty sustained 33, none healed. Oh, nine healed. 52. They lost 33. But they're... Uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to try and work that out. Well done, Dragon Riders. So, yeah. The next lore video will be on the Battles of Beleriand. The first one. Or the second one, sorry. Because the first one, the Battle Under the Stars, um, is covered in the Fianor video. Quite succinctly. Not, it's not a battle with great information about it. So, we move on to the next one. Kill them all. Oh, and we took it. Oh, and look at the population. Oh, it's got a Vintner's Guildhouse. We can sack it for 14 grand, or we can exterminate for 5, 6, 80. But we can't upgrade it. This is as big as it goes, so we'll sack it. I normally exterminate, but as as people say, it's because it's, it's a habit I'm used to. I exterminate. That's just what I do. But as some people have pointed out, it's no longer actually worth exterminating because it doesn't affect the game in the ways that it used to. So, like, for example, in Rome Total War, if you took over a barbarian settlement, they would hate you so much. And the only way to ensure loyalty to Rome was to kill everyone. So that the new people moving to the settlement were either Romans or um, they grew up with Romans leading them, which then led them to not hate you as much. Uh, but it doesn't work the same way in Med 2, so it doesn't really work out that way. Oh, we've got a catapult maker. We've got a master mason's hall. What does a Vintner's Guildhouse even do? Oh, is that the special unique wine building that I built? I think it might be. Building browser. Does it have a name though? No, because we can't actually build it. Interestingly as well, we can get a Variag encampment and a Var Candish labor camp. Why can we get a Candish labor camp? Ah, yeah, that's a bug. That's able to be built in a region it should not be able to be built in. Is it listed on here? No, it's not. Only needs a castle. Very right? encampment. Interesting. That's a strange one. Uh, I'll have to have a look into that. Oh, we've got massive retraining. Oh, of course, it's got a proper blacksmith, hasn't it? An armourer. There's very little we can actually add here, to be honest, other than the military. Oh, we'll go with the shrine first, because they probably don't like us very much. No, not very much at all. Uh, merge everything together and then retrain, actually. Alright, now you're going to be attacked. Oh, you're probably going to die. That's probably a bad idea, really. I don't think I can get troops to you fast enough. At once. Unless we run Rukar away and just leave yes. it. But then if their captain tries to defend it against the general... You. It's over, like, it's over. We should have sent another general in. And he'll never get there in time. Because they're going to besiege it on the next turn, you watch. But I don't think it's... I don't think we should let Rukard die in this place. I think we should try and get him out. Better that we lose the city than we lose the leader. I tell you what, Zartoshi, they haven't actually attacked you. So if you go along with the good units there... How may I serve? And try and get to San Tenui. See how, see how you do. Send Rukar back to Strondost. Dagan heading north. And Gimli, did you show up? No. No idea where he went. Did we actually end turn, though? Yeah, a turn just ended, didn't it? So nowhere, no idea where Gimli's gone. An honor to serve. At once. Setting a watch here. 
Just build some towers around the trees because he's probably hidden in them. Although they, we've got sight range of these areas, isn't it? Yeah. He's hiding in the trees somewhere. That's the only plausible answer. But I'll take some of these. How may I serve? Car, if you go, carry on building towers. Margos, you stick with Uldor. Uh, but I think I'll end the turn there. I'll end the uh, episode there. I think we've done very well. And we've made a bloody mountain of money. But I don't have any like, more economical buildings. Any? Uh, well, I can build... Oh, no, that's building that. The monetary decrease from this building doesn't apply to buildings you've already queued. So you have to remove them and add them again. So never queue that building in the list. Ah, oh, but you can queue up. And what have you got? You're going to build us a, a guild hall as well, so you don't need anything from you. I'll take that from you then. Might as well throw a brothel in there. A rubar. You've got quite good recruitment. Go with the three military. Wintillion ore. Train a couple more of those. And a warlord tool for the extra support. So there endeth the episode. So I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode, despite it's been one where I have raged. I would be interested to see if you think I'm in over if I am as a moderator in the wrong by not censoring a post that happens to have an emoji instead of a swear word and if you think that I was banned wrongly from Total War Center as well <laughs> also another cursory message the discord link I won't put it on the DAC videos I I, I owe the moderators that much uh, the marshals and the swan knights um, but you can access discord by going to the Edane mod videos which are I've, I've done two in the past two weeks oh also there wasn't a video yesterday um because i was busy on saturday and when i say i was busy on saturday i mean i basically played PUBG from the moment i woke up to the moment i went to bed and i just didn't want to record so i didn't but if you <laughs> i also streamed PUBG interestingly uh, on steam very um Accidentally, though, uh, I I allowed my broadcast to be viewed by anyone, so that someone who was in the Discord but wasn't a Steam friend could watch the stream. And about 15 random people from Steam turned up to watch me play PUBG. <laughs> so uh, I'm famous now, everyone. I'm a streamer as well. So what can I say? It's got my high my eyes set on the sights. However, it did open my eyes to the fact that some people may well want to just tune in and not watch a specific video, but just drop in and listen to me talk about nothing while I play a shooting game. So I might look at seeing how well my computer can handle streaming on YouTube. I've done it once before, but I didn't play with any of the settings. So I'm, I will look into that possibly. I mean, part of the reason why I bought that other laptop is so I'd have a secondary screen, really. Uh, but anyway, I've been told by Airfro that I don't have a strong enough processor, so we'll see. We'll have a look. I don't want to do it if the quality's not going to be very good, because I'm that kind of person. I don't like the poor quality, and it's the biggest thing that turns me off of channels. I'm a bit prejudiced in that way. I'm not prejudiced. Snob. <laughs> it's a better word. Oh, our troops have retrained. Um, I'll take you into that fort for free upkeep. Anyway, that will end the video. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. Welcome indeed to Knight of the North, who's taken on a slightly more permanent role as a writer. Thank you to many of you who have submitted writing to us um, in the past, but we've taken on Knight as a more permanent fixture, if you will, um, in terms of writing. So feel free to boost his ego. I'm sure it, it, his ego needs a bit of a boost because he just sucks to me in certain games we're playing at the moment. He's just not good enough. You know, I mean, back when we played Age of Empires and he could beat me so easily, but now those days are gone and and he looks up to me as 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 almost like a father figure, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean a lot to the guy. <laughs> uh, many of you, uh, of course, will not understand that I'm being sarcastic. Uh, it's an in-joke and he'll probably laugh and write something witty in the comments below. But anyway, that's the end of it. Thank you very much for watching and until we speak again, Navar Naden Paramad Melonin and farewell.